The new Netflix original series, The Crown, tells the inside story of two of the world's most famous addresses, Buckingham Palace and 10 Downing Street. The series will begin with Princess Elizabeth's wedding in 1947 and carry through to the present day. With a reported budget of over $100 million, the series is Netflix's most expensive show to date. Here is the trailer for The Crown. It would help if we could decide here and now on your name. My name? Yes, ma'am. Your regnal name. Uh, that is the name you will take as queen. Let's not overcomplicate matters unnecessarily. My name is Elizabeth. And long live Queen Elizabeth. Don't you get sick of it all? And lonely. I do. Which is why it's so important to have the right person by your side. You understand the titles, they're not the job. She is the job. Loving her, protecting her, she is the essence of your duty. We have a new sovereign, young, and a woman. I'll escort her down from there. No, sir, if you don't mind, the crown takes precedence. You don't think I would have preferred to grow up out of the spotlight, away from the scrutiny and the visibility? Be firm, just lay down the law. I know he's Winston Churchill and all that, but remember who you are. You're Nobody. the Queen of England. This new Elizabethan age comes at a time when mankind stands on the edge of catastrophe. You my wife or my queen? I am both, and a strong man will be able to kneel to both. I will not kneel before my wife. But your wife is not asking you to. But my queen commands me. Yes. I beg you make an exception for me. No. What kind of marriage is this? What kind of family? I need to speak to my sister. No! I am aware that I'm surrounded by people who feel that they could do the job better. Strong people with powerful characters. But for better or worse, the crown has landed on my head. I have seen three great monarchies brought down through their failure to separate personal indulgences from duty. You must not allow yourself to make similar mistakes. The crown must win. Must always win. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Joanna S. has a creator and writer, Peter Morgan, the director, Stephen Daldry, and three stars of the series, Matt Smith, who plays Prince Philip, Claire Foy, who plays Queen Elizabeth II, and John Lithgow, who plays Winston Churchill. I'm pleased to have all of them at this table. This looks fun and interesting. Um, how did it come about? Well, uh, the genesis is a long one. Uh, I, I, we know I, the history that's drawn from, but yeah. But, yeah. but in, in in my own life, I mean, uh, I wrote a, a a film for British television about the relationship between uh, Tony Blair and Gordon Brown, right. and then the producers having enjoyed, which Stephen Frears made, and and and, and producers uh, enjoyed it and said, "Couldn't you do one about the Queen?" And I tried writing the Queen, and uh, it was deathly dull. It was it was it was awful. And and then I added Tony Blair to it, and something in the yeah. The yeah. alchemy or the chemistry of prime minister and queen, you know, of elected and you know, as it were, constitutional head of state, and mm -hmm. that that just became something that worked for me, or, or I could find my way into, and that then became the audience, or it yeah. became the queen, the movie, and then the audience, the play, and right. and then I was so captivated writing the scenes between Churchill and the young queen yeah. that I thought, well, there's more to this. Every prime minister talks to the queen. They do. Yeah. It's a confessional. Right. And it, we saw that in the, on Broadway. Yes. Well, I, I, if you did see it, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so then you, you, you've got to have the best director you can find. <laughs> they weren't available, sir. Yeah, so they were available. I went to the bottom so of the Stephen pile. Stephen said, hey, hear me. He was begging, begging on his knees. He was. Uh, uh, no, uh, we, 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 we've known each other because, you know, the community in London is, is smaller than the community yeah. here, and we all know one another. And Stephen and I had been looking for years to find something, and, 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 and uh, so we did that, and then it's just grown out of that. Yeah. Then the challenge is casting, I guess. 
Yeah, yes, it is. It, it was always going to be a task. Um, and we were pretty thorough, I thought. We went through for playing Her Majesty the Queen. I think we went through just about most of Claire's um, contemporaries, <laughs> uh, if I'm being honest about it. Uh, to, <laughs> yeah, like, there were meetings where I looked at the list of the people that we were going to oh meet to that day, and I'd be like, she's interesting, she's interesting, don't know her. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and I think we'd been through about four or five levels until until uh, of casting, until I sat and listened to Claire, and I said, but she's wonderful. Yes. You know, what was it made her wonderful, though? Well, that's where do you start? I mean, where do you start? Well, where do you start? Okay, no, 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 no. Okay, quiet. Give me one. <laughs> well, I mean, was it voice? Was it? No, because Claire, I think, I mean, I hate, I mean, pardon to compliment you in the room, yeah, yeah. but Claire is, you know, the leading actress of her generation. Yes, I mean, it's, right? it's true to say, and it's, yeah. uh, I think she does an astonishing... But we didn't know that. We didn't know that. But you, you did not know that? I No, well, she but that's the... what, uh, there were all these other people that have had breaks in this movie, that movie, this movie, okay, that movie, right. and, and, and they, and I, and <laughs> technically, and just, just her suitability for the role, yeah. just shone immediately. And, I, and in answer to your question, I think it's something about being, which is not easy about being both effort, effortlessly beautiful yeah. and then and also quite sometimes a blank canvas but to be both modest and yet have a lot going on behind the eyes and I mean, she could do no very well and and then you've got, you've got you've got to have prince philip don't you we do and then matt, was, <laughs> matt walked in the door and it was straight away it, that, that, yeah it, that was that was yeah. instant and matt, of matt but, but, i'm but begin because of uh, a, a presence or because of a chemistry? A what? Chemistry. Yeah. Chemistry. The minute the two of them Between were together. No, I don't. You, what are you doing debasing this? There was a, 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 an actor's <laughs> chemistry. Yes. Not, not, not yes. a sort of. Yeah, no, yes. An actor's chemistry. So, yeah. Yeah. The, 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 Before was, they read or after they the read? The minute they were in the room. And then I made the producer, sadly, I made the producer's life difficult because uh, uh, Matt, uh, Matt is a, a fearsome negotiator, or his agents are. <laughs> and, and they were holding us to ransom. Oh, no. And, and, uh, and I, said to, I did say to the producers, God, I said, oh, it's this fella or, or nobody. There's nobody else. Nobody yeah. else. <laughs> and then you have to go across the pond to find Winston Churchill. Oh. <laughs> Which was the, the casting director's idea. And, oh, right. and absolutely, we did it on the Queen. She, uh, she chose James Cromwell, yeah. which was a really unexpected choice for Prince Philip. And 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 I think bringing someone in it brings such a fresh perspective. And 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 the minute he, uh, John started reading the read, there was just this. Uh, John was reading and he had his f face in the text, right. and there were about a hundred other people around the room who went like this. Yeah. It yeah. was just fantastic. Wow. It, it was amazing. Do you know what it was that you sort of had? What was your access into Churchill? Well, I thought I knew a good deal about Churchill. I had played FDR once with Bob Hoskins as Churchill and had done a lot of historical reading. But when it came time to play the part, I plunged deep into research, read about him, and found out how little I had known, uh, mainly about the whole sweep of his life. I was so fascinated by his very young years, his yeah. childhood, his War War teen Daniel, years, yeah. his twenties, his thirties, and they completely informed him as an old man. I mean, I play the part between the ages of about 73 and 80, mm -hmm. but I sort of found him in his childhood. Mm -hmm. And of course did an enormous amount of uh, fossicking around for audio and video and uh, listening to that extraordinary voice. But did you find the voice hard, John? Did you, did you find that? Well, I, I had a great uh, co-conspirator in a man named William Conacher, a great dialect coach who helped me, but I'm happy to say he spent just as much time with the English actors. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> we all had a massive job to do yeah, in that really. department. Well, because it's a very the, different the language. The 1950s. Yeah, so it's a very different voice. An entirely voice. different register. And if you, if you are a, a, a dialect, E evolutionist and such people exist mm -hmm. and you chart the different you know the difference yeah. in, in, mm -hmm. in the vowel pronunciations it's yeah. absolutely breathtaking between the Queen as a young woman and Prince Harry now how far yeah. the English yeah. language has yeah. yeah. shifted oh, yeah. and you and you realize you know that if you go back to Shakespeare's time the reason so many of those couplets didn't rhyme for us is mm -hmm. because they were being pronounced in yeah. an entirely different yeah. way and and an upper-class person in Shakespeare's era spoke like la, a little bit of yeah. a farm. Yeah. It's, right. it's you know yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, extraordinary how it's changed 
even in f 60 years. And as for Churchill, he had all these extraordinary idiosyncrasies, a, a list that came out of the back of his mouth, oh. and, uh, and a very, very nasal voice, so I jammed cotton up my nose. Uh, and uh, the problem is, for an American, every Englishman imitates Winston Churchill. Yeah. So you feel like you have a lot of competition. But at a certain point, you just put all that aside, and, and but it's not John. It's not an imitation show by any chance. Exactly, yeah, yeah, that's the whole point. It's it's funny, it's funny, you know, but you are trying to capture something, point, Stephen. What, what is it? Well, you're trying to. I mean, you're, you're putting. Well, first of all, you're trying to capture a historical circumstance right, and a situation right. and the dramatic situation. But it, and we do a huge amount of research, which we can talk about about making sure that we are we know exactly what actually happened, so that we can actually, if we're going to change from uh, authenticity, we know exactly why. And, so and the dialogue is not unreasonable. So the dialogue, well, it's it's a bit unreasonable. Unreasonable. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to keep you awake. <laughs> but he never said any of this. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's ridiculous. But we never approach the show as an impersonation show, and, and yeah. I hope we, you yeah. never felt any pressure to do. And, yeah. and again, yeah. going back to voices, had we done the actual, the actual dialect that they spoke at the in the period, and we, we make. Yeah, we, we make uh, bows to it, but in no way are you speaking in that very extreme dialect that the royal family spoke in the 1950s. In the, yeah, their, their public voice, though, that's the interesting thing, is that what... There isn't that much... Like, I never got hold of anything which was her privately at that age and that period of time. Tough. It doesn't really exist. Do you see today, in the woman that we know as the Queen, uh, in terms of what you looked at in those early years when she is uh, assuming the, the uh, queenship, mm. Do you see the qualities that she has today present there in what you know about her early life? Yeah, I mean, it's tricky, isn't it? Because you sort of... Uh, you, I, I was sort of desperate to, in a way. Um, uh, but I don't, I don't know. I think, I think she says herself that she has grown into the role um, and that she never had an apprenticeship, she never had anyone to sort of guide her, apart from Churchill, really. Um, and so she was sort of in at the deep end. Oh, well, and also... Hold <laughs> <laughs> on, Well, you sort of... Speak I mean, up. I, 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 yeah. No, 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 no. Um, okay. but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't... Yes. But, but they were sort of doing it together, that sort of element of it. I think yeah, trying to yeah, find yeah, their yeah. feet, and yeah, that's yeah, why yeah, the story's yeah, so yeah. interesting, is these two people kind of trying to navigate um, how to behave with each mm, other and yeah. in a wider... Well, but I think, yeah, she's always been quite resilient, I think. Um, but I think she's learned how to do the job and do it very well over time. Um, but her as a person, I've got absolutely no idea because she doesn't express herself. But, yeah, <laughs> Peter's queen. You didn't call her up and say... <laughs> yeah, how did you feel like on to, this Well, day? I'd like to ch stop by yeah. for a chat. Well, she I'll be playing you and maybe you could have, give me a few pointers. Yeah, well, she right. always knew she was going to be queen. Yeah. She knew that at some point her father would die. And right. although, you know... And there's no male heirs. There were no male heirs, and yeah. she and and he, but he <laughs> died so much sooner and so much quicker, yeah. and, and although it's the story of our first couple of episodes, you know, the story of his uh, his progressive illness, uh, it, he he still died age fifty six, which is you know at least a decade, if not fifteen or twenty years. I think the young couple, which was what excited me about telling the story. They could very, they reasonably could have expected at least another ten, if not another twenty to years. To get ready and understand. And no, to have, to, have to have a normal life. life. Yeah, right. 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 And they, 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 they were in Malta. Yeah. You know, uh, there it, where, where, where the entire Mediterranean fleet was based, and they were enjoying the life of a sort of a, 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 an ambitious young naval officer who who was fast rising through the ranks, and she was going to supermarkets, shopping with the other naval wives. Well, she served longer as queen than, in, than, than any other yeah, monarch. monarch. Mm. Right. British monarch, yes. British monarch, yeah. But I think, uh, yes. I think, the, the it's, I think it's worldwide now. I don't think it will ever be repeated. No. Uh, I doubt it. And she is at at highest level of popularity? She is. Yeah. 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 People keep saying that, she, that she's unelected. And, and of course, technically, that's true. But if there was a strong groundswell of, of, of objection or protest, was, yeah. one would feel it. If there were an election tomorrow, she'd win with an absolute. She'd, she'd win with a North Korean landslide. Yeah. I mean, there is that much. You know, there is that much support. North Korean landslide. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's true to say, it's true to say Peter, isn't it? That's not always been the case. She's not always had that degree Absolutely. of popularity. In the, the film, the Queen, was probably. You explored the very dip in the, one of the lowest ebbs of her popularity. It's true, the, right? the early nineties were a terrible time yeah. for you know yeah. for the royal family and 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 the history. I have to say, really, 
since Diana's death, uh, it, it, that she's reached both an age, you know, where where she's so it, it's so stable now her popularity. I think the last few years it hasn't changed at all. And there came a point I think where people suddenly thought it would be undignified to be too critical. I think there will be, and it would be healthy for there to be. Uh, uh, a Another renewed one. critical look right. at the monarchy and the way... But probably after she dies. On after, succession. Without a doubt. How did Churchill feel about her? Did he feel paternal? Did he feel mainly a sense of responsibility because he was the prime minister or he was going to be the prime minister, but he was a part of the political world? I think he felt an overwhelming sense of responsibility. And as in many areas, he thought he was the only one who could do the job. Yeah. Uh, he was and the, he knew best. He was the only Victorian left in the whole mm -hmm. upper stratum of British parliamentary politics. And, uh, and as such, it was, you know, this was post-war Britain, where Britain had technically won, but the country was absolutely devastated. Mm -hmm. And the, the monarchy was on the bubble. Right. For George VI to die so suddenly... Uh, to Churchill, it was desperately important that the monarchy be saved. But it's also an opportunity for him. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he is he himself is superannuated. He becomes prime minister way too old at right. age 75. And his primary job is to make sure yeah. the transition goes well. So even though he didn't have a close relationship with Elizabeth before, his audiences with her, which is why the scenes are so charged and yeah. wonderful, He's an enormously protect, protective, kind of avuncular. He f regards himself as her mentor. Yeah. And in the course of our 10 episodes, that job is, becomes irrelevant yeah, because always, she always, becomes a strong monarch. I always remember the quote that, that when um, he lost to Clement Attlee, he said, she, Clementine, his wife, said, it must be a blessing in disguise. And Churchill said, it's a hell of a disguise. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, this relationship I, is key, the relationship between the two of them, Prince Philip and, and Elizabeth. Um, how do you define it? Other than you have somebody who, his wife, uh, he is the subject. Well, that's, yeah. That's, that's the obvious. One of the definitions, I yeah. suppose. I mean, it's quite tempestuous, but it's also... Tempestuous? Yeah, I think so. But it's also charged with a, with a very profound sense of love and loyalty mm -hmm. and respect. I think they are actually soulmates. I mean... You look at them now, but I think I think the the trauma uh, uh, of her father's death and her sort of ascension to the crown would would put pressure on any young couple. And I mean that's what makes it so interesting. I think is 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 the conflict, particularly for Philip, from from his perspective, is the conflict of being sort of emasculated in his role in the home and in the relationship, and then his I don't know his 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 sort of love for her and his um. His desire, I think, to sort of be man of the house and that being... Family. Yeah, and very much a father to Charles. Uh, yes. Well, yeah. yes. <laughs> well, wait yeah. for season two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Getting, you yeah. know, we're, we're, yeah. the three of us are just representing this huge cast of fantastic mm. actors. Yeah. And one of the really fine performances is Jared Harris oh, as yeah. George oh, VI. Yeah. And there's an extraordinary sense in Philip when he senses that George VI may die, yes. that this may completely rob him of his own identity as a young man. Mm. That his wife will be queen. Yeah. Mm. And yeah. that this performance is really something. Oh, it really and it's all as, 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 you're talking about Matt or you're talking about George VI? I'm talking about at the moment it's Matt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's um, full so tell me how I mean, what was it you saw in him that you thought other than the dilemma? In Philip. Yes. Oh God, so much. I love his. I, there's a sort of wonderful sense of rebellion about him. There's a great <clears throat> ranging. I, I, there's a sort of wonderful ranginess to him physically that I love. He um, he's terribly witty. He's terribly funny. He's terribly intelligent. Um, and oh, he's a sort of alien. He's terribly of, intelligent. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. I mean, well, I've seen I, I that. I think what people don't. A lot of people have just grown up thinking here is this guy who follows in the footsteps of, and, and yeah. we hear uh, who occasionally. You know about him. They know nothing about him. Right. He makes headlines by putting his foot in it in somewhere here or yeah. there. He says it's something inappropriate. That makes all the headlines. And it was really when it, we, we, I read a wonderful book about him as a young man, uh, written by Philip Ede. And, and, yeah, and, and it, it, yeah. every page that you read, you sort of have to go and lie down because, yeah. to, to sort of process the enormity of what. 
his family went through what he went through and and because you know he lost his grandfather uh, his mother's mental uh, uh, problems and struggles and his sisters were all uh, anyway it was his own childhood was so difficult and, and full of challenges and then uh, and yet he came out of this 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 sort of rather complex necessarily with that sort of an upbringing um, individual in, in, into our most, as it were, conservative or traditional family. And here is somebody that nobody knows anything about. And, and one of the privileges of writing and creating this show is to be able to, for me to find out and, and, to, and to put flesh on, on these bones, you know. Was there a moment in which she sort of got it being queen? In other words, I mean, she, she tried on the crown, obviously, and we saw that in the trailer. But was it, did it take her several <coughs> years, in a sense, to feel really comfortable with the authority she had at such a young age? God, you know, I think that's a... a no, I don't know whether... I, don't, I, I definitely don't think we've got to that point in the series, I don't, I don't well, think. Well, suddenly, that, there's the click moment and she's suddenly pretty good at it. Yeah. I think there are several moments in the show yeah, where, but, where she finds her feet, finds her feet, finds her feet, and then yeah. in tandem with Churchill's... A, a, a resignation and his aging. I think Churchill feels he can resign, firstly, because he needs to, because he's so unwell. Right. And it was scandalous, you know, with all Why the strokes. Uh, uh, but, but also his job is done. He feels his job is done, not only in public life, but also, you know, in, uh, as a mentor, as a guardian and guide to the Queen. Mm. Uh, this is a clip of Queen Elizabeth meeting and being lectured by Winston Churchill. Here it is. <laughs> well done, sir. Well done. That's the first time I've ever seen that. I've got a pause in Oh, my God. No, so? <laughs> Who is that guy? <laughs> Winston Churchill. Yeah. Wow, that was something. It's thrilling, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> problem. I always remember problem. Problem. Well, well, that's that's I had to work on that. Yeah, but William was always coming yeah. in. That is her first, that's, that's her first audience as Queen with, with mm. Winston Churchill. And, uh, this and is what, 1953? 53. 53. Yeah. You see that? That is a scene from the play, The Audience, right. and you can see the very wellspring of the whole series yeah. in that yeah. scene. Mm -hmm. The audience, wonderful. for anybody who didn't see it, it's about the, the moments in which the Prime Minister will come in for a meeting with the Queen, and you see a series of Prime Ministers, including Tony Blair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and and, uh, uh, and the relationship, obviously the relationship between the Queen and Churchill by the end of the season is, is quite different. and, and uh, you know, it feels it's, like the, yes. The you mean it feel kind of leveled or? Well, I think possibly. But you tipped it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's wonderful when she finally chastises me. Yeah. And boy, is she good in that. Oh. Yeah. And then he realizes his job's oh, done. I wish I could call a clip show in that. But mm. yeah. I have to wait. <laughs> you get in a lot of trouble. Stephen, after you've got your characters and you've got your script, uh, what's the big challenge for you? Well, this is a very, it's a, there's many different storylines, many different strands. It's a very, the, funny enough, you started talking about expense. I mean, the, the issue with the, with the show in terms of, the, of, of, of staging it is that they, they tend to live in, in very opulent houses. They tend to live in buggy bars. They tend to be, when they go out in public, a lot of people are watching them. Um, they tend to have the best clothes and they have big cars. So, it, needless to say, the, the show um, required a certain amount of financial support. And it's a big show. I mean, when you go out on, on set, you do I mean it's... Big. You there's feel like it's a, a great sense of scale to it. There's a yeah. great sense of scale to it, which was, was always going to be a, a requirement of a, of a narrative. Yeah. Um, but we are blessed. I mean, just to follow on from what John was saying, we are blessed with the most extraordinary ensemble of actors. Yeah. Mm. I mean, really, right the way, right the way through the cast, it's yeah. been a total joy mm. um, to work with such a great group of people. That's what Nina's we expect. Nina's actually brilliant, isn't she? As well, Who's that? Nina Gold. Nina Gold. She's Good she's genius. really skilled. And 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 there are at least 10 characters that have a, an enormous weight on them. I, yeah. I mean, moral dilemmas, uh, yeah. Yeah. The, yeah, the, just the intensity of the high stakes in very, very different stories. Boy, you've got everything we need here, don't we? I mean, if you can't make this interesting, Peter, Thanks. <laughs> I could throw that back at you. <laughs> I mean, you know, no, no, we've it, got history, we've got royalty, mm. uh, we've got death. Yeah, but I. But, we've got maturation. We've got. You but know. do you know how perilously close I feel? I'm, you know, skating all the time to complete parody and catastrophe. Mm -hmm. You know, and that when you when you're dealing with people like this. 
the tone, you know, the minute you veer too much to the right, it becomes a hatchet job. You veer too much to the left, it becomes, you know, a Photoshop, a sort of, you know, a hagiography. Yeah, it becomes yeah. something, a, a whitewash. And, 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 and there's such resistance to the idea that these people are three-dimensional three -dimensional human beings. With, and, and, and it feels almost like uh, treachery to be, to, be, to be going, treason to be writing about them as human beings. Uh, well, I, I think so. People underline human beings. Yeah, because uh, because it, you know, to, for example, in a young marriage, uh, the idea that there would be the idea that there would be matrimonial squabbles. Mm. Mm. Um, feel you could be very careful when you write that sort of stuff because you don't want it to appear. You don't want to look in too much. And the minute the show becomes prurient, it becomes ugly. And the minute it becomes sensational, it becomes ugly. So although I do have fantastic ingredients. I have to be really sober yeah, and careful. Right balance, yeah, right? very, very careful. I'm sure you're up to that. I don't know. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. Thank you all. It's a pleasure. It really is. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Congratulations to each of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Just think it's November fourth is right around the corner. <laughs> Get ready for the election Four by days. watching. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's very nice to talk about something you're so proud of. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.